Let's turn this TV off. I don't know what you're doing to me. All right. Just giving it a few to let some people come on. Hey, Jamie. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. I, I did it. My goal was, because last year I was busy writing my book and stuff, I yeah. was like, I am going to make every book club, I'm going to read every book and make every book club meeting. This is the 12th one. I was like, yay. yay. I appreciate you greatly. That's so awesome. <laughs> Yes. Like I know a bunch of people made it their resolution. I don't know how many of those are still with us, but it's good to know that you're one of them. That's awesome. Yes, thanks. <sighs> Where's everybody at? Oh, here we go. I did start it just a second early, but hopefully they'll start coming. Progress. Delisha, how are you? Hey, hello everybody. You relax today now that the election is over? Girl, no, because them damn children drove me crazy. No. Uh, the teacher's life. I was up late too last night. I'm like, look, we all tired. I know. I was like, I'm not going to sleep until I see these results. I know. Done. I know it's going to come in later than that. I was like, you know what? We need, we, we just, the whole country need a day off to breathe. Right. <laughs> crazy. Yes. That was stressful. But again, the metro area came through. I was worried because I was looking at them results like, I know they is not going to let this country Negro. Listen, I know. And office. I'm sitting there at the polls looking at the people voting and I'm like, man, where where is more of us? I need y'all to start coming to these polls. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but my county pulled through. I'm, I live in Gwinnett, so... I looked at some of the comments people left under polls. Like, I was shocked at the large amount of Hispanic population that voted yeah. against him. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing that happened with Donald Trump. They are, are voting Republican. I don't know why. I'm like... <sighs> yeah, that's how it is in Texas and Florida. I don't get it at all. Yeah, I'm like this man but is like... Go ahead. But my, my friend told me it's the... She said it's, it's those Hispanics because she's Cuban. She said, nah... It's not us. It's the ones that think they white. The white looking Cubans and stuff. I said, well, you better get your little cousins together and tell them I said it. <laughs> right. They better rectify it. Welcome, Sean, Asia. Hi there. Hello. Hey, y'all. All right. I don't know who else is hopping on. I know like Jess had something to do. She's gonna she's out of town, as always. I'm like that girl, she never stays put. I'm like, bruh, can you sit down for like five seconds? I feel like she's missed a ton of book club this year. Normally she's like one of our regulars, but she's been so busy with her schedule this year. It's Topeka. Okay. Um, okay. So let me go through my little spiel. Of course, we are talking about the color purple. Y'all see, I have both my copies. The new and the old. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. Was everybody part of the, who was part of the watch party? Yeah, yeah, I was. I don't know. That was fun. Which one? Per col um, oh, color purple watch party. Yeah, you were there, weren't you? Yeah, that's like, I thought you were there. That was fun. Oh, here comes Keela. All right, everybody's trickling in now. That was fun to watch. My mom even hopped on the watch party. She was quiet. She was watching us, but she was entertained by our commentary. They had us cursing in front of her mama. Right. <laughs> Listen, I curse in front of my mom. So, hey, if I do it, y'all good. Trust me. Wait like, a minute. She enjoyed the, enjoy the commentary, so. You did. <laughs> the did. And Renee, I didn't get the memo to wear the, the book girl magic hoodies and shirts. Wait, but, wait a minute. No, I That's just came good. home from from work and threw on some some other clothes. And this just, <laughs> <laughs> the, 
the hoodie. I had the, the <laughs> I had my hoodie on all day. It's a blue one though. But I was like, I have to wear the purple tee for the color purple. So I decided to yeah. to wear it. Um, I need to buy some more. Honestly, I don't get them free either because I have a partnered with a company that prints them or whatever. So I have to buy them too. But I want a black one, the black, the one that Topeka has on, and I want another shirt too. Um, anywho. The color purple for me, this was my second time uh, reading this. So I remember reading this probably three years ago when I read it for the first time. And I honestly had seen the movie a hundred times. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Never had read the book. And I was like, ah, let me just go ahead and do it so I can say that I read it. And I actually was amazed at how much, how true the movie stayed to the book. Like, I know there's parts that are missing towards the end, especially, but for the most part, like I was able to recite lines as I was listening to the audiobook for the first time and the second time. Um, so sometimes rereading books for me is hard because I get bored with them, but this one still the same. Like I still was engrossed from beginning to end with it. Um, still reciting lines, still laughing at parts. So I felt like um, I felt good about reading it again. It still was just as amazing as the first time I read it. So yeah. Um, do you guys have any preference what you like better, the movie or the book? Um, I like the movie. I love the movie, but I wish the movie would have had more stuff in it that the book had. Yeah. This I is my first, first yeah. time reading the book ever. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked when I read some of the parts, like, why did they not include this? Yeah. What? Yeah. Right. It's like um, Suge and, and Celie's relationship's a little deeper than what they portray in the movie. There's a lot going on there. So yeah, there's definitely, and even her relationship with Mr., like how it ends yes. in the movie is like, they don't like each other. And it's like, you know, before you do right, until you do right by me, you know, um, that famous she line. like they all that, but then they ended up being, being friends. Being friends. And I, exactly. I, didn't, I read this yeah. as a teenager in the 80s, so I did not remember that. Yeah. Yeah, and then like, Spielberg did say why he didn't put about Seeley and Shug. Yeah, something about he didn't feel and, like um, Hollywood or viewers were ready for that. For that. Yeah, I was gonna say we got to remember how when it was written. But yeah. I mean, how when the movie yeah. came out. Now yeah. I no no doubt it would have been in there. And yeah. movies are longer. Movies Color mm -hmm. Purple was like really long at the time, and they were mm -hmm. concerned even about that if people were yeah, right. it was too long. Yeah. Now we got Avengers and black three hour movies. So <laughs> right. I'm right. sure they would have. I feel like if it was done now, the whole, like you said, it's pretty much verbatim at even some parts. I'm yeah. sure we yeah. would have got the whole thing. Because I would have loved to have seen the part with uh, Nettie um, and, the, and the pastor's wife. Because when she was like, you had an affair because these kids look so, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I didn't uh, remember most of this. I did not remember from high school, other than what I saw in the movie, because I've seen the movie way more times than I've read the book, and I just didn't remember that part. And I was like, "This the same thing. This would have been good in the movie." Yeah, I forgot. Yes, got how her sweatshirt on. Into Nettie's. I forgot how deep they went into Nettie's uh, part of the story. <laughs> I was laughing at Jess because she came on with her sweatshirt on too. I was oh, like, she's, she's got like, her stuff. <laughs> we all got our stuff uh, representing. <laughs> <laughs> um what was interesting to me so I read I don't know who else read this and it it's long okay it's like 500 pages gathering the blossoms under fire which are the journals of Alice Walker so you kind of get a look at her writing process and just little tip I mean it's mostly about her personal life but you do get glimpses of the color purple like how much money she was making off of it um her role in helping you know with filming of the movie and um, just different parts, but I did not know that this was that um, Mister is based off her grandfather. That it was like a similar situation where I don't know if any of you guys have read this, but it's based off of her grandfather having like similarly wanting another bride, but having to marry the one that he didn't want. So um, a lot of that was based off of her grandfather and the abuse. I don't know. I'm trying to think of how it was because I know that he married Bright, but was the bride her grandmother? But I think the way she wrote it in the book, I think it was her grandmother. Because Celie doesn't have children by Mister, right? In the movie or in the book, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that is her. Like the person he marries does end up being her grandmother. But she even talks about how 
the family would make jokes about Oh, there's somebody named Patrick trying to join. Let's see what this he is. He had about. a guy a few weeks. Yeah, I know. So I'm wondering if it's um name so, was Patrick. I think that's okay. the same guy. It's coming back. He wants some more. Hey Patrick. <laughs> hey Patrick. <laughs> hey, Patrick. <laughs> um so it, they talk about how in the family they would make jokes about like the abuse that their grandfather would you know the things that he would do to their grandmother and how like oh, wow. he would chase her into the field with a shotgun and just be shooting it off and stuff like that and like it was some serious stuff um but a lot of what she incorporated was from her grandfather and he did have like a Shug Avery like More yeah than- she touches on it a little bit in 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 this book um <laughs> Boy, Al- you learned a lot about Alice in this one. And I need to read the one that Jamie, that you talked about, the the one that's actually about the color purple that we all bought that I still haven't, I hadn't had time. No this book took me it. like, this took me like two and a half weeks to, to read. And yeah, I was over I it. We were reading that one after the color purple, like this? as a group. Yeah. Oh, it was no, a not, new not as a group. I think, well, some of us had talked about that we were going to read it, but not necessarily as a Okay. book club read but if you guys would like to join no yes, i thought I, it was I, a, just some people in the book club it's 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 long not that it wasn't a good book but you know i'm a romance reader so it's just very like 500 pages drawn out it just was until today like i probably read about six hours worth on like 1.8 speed um to get it done because i was just like i've been on this book for two and a half weeks like i need to like move on to something else if i'm gonna hit my reading goal um so it's good it talks a lot about her relationships with her partners her husband her first husband mel um then she's with this guy robert and then you know tracy chapman which y'all probably already knew about um and then she has like two other women that she has relationships with that she talks about um in the book so it's actually it's very interesting um you just one of those you kind of got to be in a mood because in a sense it's like her life it's her journals it's you know her mm-hmm. thoughts and feelings so um it was good but yeah it took me a while to read I was like I'm ready to move on to something else mm-hmm. like I need some romance I think I'm gonna start a Kennedy Ryan's book before I let go so um yeah but um the color part like I wish that like even the parts of Celie with her like her pant making I don't even know how involved they got in that in the movie like they really went in depth with the creation of her pants and things like that and how it Mm -hmm. came to yeah but they didn't really touch on that as much in the book and um the one in the book that I was shocked to hear about was the relationship with Miss Sophia and the mayor's daughter yeah like Mm-hmm. And how the daughter was so attached to her. And then the daughter brought her kid around. That part right there was, that was a different part to hear about. But it was, when I was reading the book, it was funny how the release from jail happened so fast in the book. But in a movie, it's like, that's one of the last things to happen. And we see her relationship with that lady, but we don't see nothing else past that. So that was like a good to see what actually happened when she was with her. And from what I recall in the movie and maybe even in the book, um, what is her name? Uh, Squeak goes Squeak. to That's like what I was gonna negotiate. Say. We don't see that Squeak actually lets her then run through her yeah, to get out, like, to get her out. To negotiate. Um, her getting out of jail and so that wasn't a really a thing the way Alice Walker talked about it is like back in the day it wasn't necessarily like a negotiation like that it was like this is your punishment oh like they were the refusal to work for white people and then it was like oh okay you're not going to work for me well you're going to go to jail and then their jail sentence would be to work for that person like they would have to do it anyways um but the way that it was written in the color purple was like oh we're going to negotiate and let her come out and this is a better option than her sitting in a jail cell to go work for this family but really um when Alice was talking about it in gathering the blossoms under fire it was like this was a punishment back in the day like black people didn't want to work for white people so they would jail them 
And uh, I can't remember the word that she used, but it was some type of like labor law or whatever. She that they would have feeling like she's like I'm a slave isn't that what it ends up being and I was like oh dang yep and that's exactly how Alice describes it in in her book is like this is a true thing that would happen like to black people I was confused with that whole part with squeak because okay I get it she went to the jail and the man must have raped her yeah but was that her father it was I think there was some type of family uncle. connection that was her yeah. Uncle. 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 yeah her father's brother Ugh. which just makes me cringe all over thinking about it yes people are evil right yep still happening today mm-hmm. for those of you that read it for the first time was there anything else unexpected that you didn't from watching the movie that was different or that was unexpected to you that you found in the book uh squeak running off with the man and they went to go sell weed in Panama. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that part. That was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of what didn't squeak squeak ended up that was Shug's husband, wasn't it? Yes. Eventually, yeah. yeah. And then she ends up with her. With him, rather. I'm trying to think of what else. Um I don't know. It's such a classic, though. Like, I could probably read this over and over and over again. Um, you know, like, for me, um, I read this book back when I was in college. And I and then I saw the movie because I remember I had to do a paper where I compared the book and the movie. And after the movie, I was like, I am never reading that book again because I was just so bothered by <laughs> Mr.'s character. Yeah. And that's probably the 19, 20-year-old me. And then now this is my first time reading it since um, college time. And it was things that I missed probably when in my college days, but things I had forgotten. And yeah. so this was a great refresh for me, but I did look at the movie. I missed the watch party, but I did watch it because you watch all it. said there was yeah. like a November 30th deadline. Yes, for so I North hurried Netflix. and watched it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was interesting that, um, you know, a lot was left out. I, I didn't realize how much was left out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wish they had put in too. So I kind of agree with that. I wish they had kept some parts in. One Did thing, any, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say one thing for me that I always appreciated about the book and this is so random and weird, but in the movie, there were so many kids running around. I was like, who are all these kids for? <laughs> but then the right. book kind of sets it out that he had some with his wife and some with Suge. But the ones yep. with Suge were not at the house. Mm-hmm. And they never kind of let on in the movie that Suge had kids with Mr. Right. It was just a thing. So right. I always appreciate it. And this was like my fourth time reading it. And then I read it again. You know, I read it this time. And I was like, yeah, the kids. I like that. Because I, I always remember watching the movie and going, who are all these kids? Like these kids are little and she's been here for years. Mm-hmm. Whose children are these? You know? Yeah. Did any of you, for the, those that read the book before the movie, did the characters that were chosen for the movie match up to what you had in your head? I don't know any other difference. Like I watched the movie first. So even reading the book, I picture, you know, Danny Glover, like that's who's in my head. Um, Whoopi Goldberg, like those characters are ingrained in my head. Mm-hmm. They're ingrained in mine because I read the book in high school and now I'm 52. So <laughs> yeah, that book came out in like. Well, I don't remember what I pictured back then. Yeah, I just been like, yeah. I always picture the people in the movie. <laughs> That's I'm me the too. same way, Topeka. I, I read it so long ago, I don't remember what I was thinking when the movie I'd came agree. out. I remember being excited that it was going to be a movie, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I wasn't disappointed. I, I don't think I was disappointed with any of the casting stuff, but back then I was a little more forgiving. Now I'll be like, mm, that is not who that is. <laughs> <me." laughs> you know. <laughs> I yeah. find it, um, I read it, the movie came out while I was in child, what was I? Anyway, I'm 48. So the movie <laughs> The movie was my first exposure to the book. And then we read the book. And I think rereading it multiple times over the years, rereading it now, I can envision different pictures of the people myself, interestingly, even though that movie, like 
Yeah. We were talking in the we were talking in the watch party. I can quote it like just about daily yeah. in some kind of way. Yeah. And you have those those visuals ingrained in your mind, but I can envision them differently because it was like took took my breath away to reread it at this point in my life, having learned so much, having gone through so much, like it's it was just a different experience this time around. And see, for me reading it after having watched the movie. I kept reading it and hearing like Whoopi Goldberg versus me too. Whoopi, like yeah. I never asked you for anything. I never asked, like <laughs> right. And I think that's why I was able to read the book so fast because I was reading it like with their name. My name is Mary Agnes. Like I literally could hear it in my head. And so I'm like, oh my god, I'm almost done with this book. Why am I reading it so fast? Because it was like playing out like the movie in my head. Same. I was literally cracking up laughing one day listening to the book. Mm -hmm. Dying laughing like I was watching the movie because I was picturing, I'm trying to, it was when Squeak was like confronting uh, Sophia. (laughs) At the bar or at the the juke joint? Yeah, it was the most (laughs) hilarious thing because I was picturing all of those people in that time to go. Yeah, time to go. Time to go. I think that those. I think the movie allowed us to experience the comedy a little bit more because you mm-hmm. almost like the, the way that it's written. It's so intense in some ways, and then with the broken English, like you're trying to decipher what am I supposed to think about this. So the movie did interpret mm-hmm. some some comedic places but um i'm with you um is it i don't know if it's asia asia Asia? Asia. okay i'm like you i was listening to it on audio while driving one day and was like boy they played this well in the movie yeah yeah very funny (laughs) one one of my favorite lines is when sophia tells her you ought to bash Mister's head today. Heaven, heaven go. What she said, like heaven, heaven always gonna be there or something. No, think about heaven later. That's what think she about heaven yeah. like, Bash Mister's head today. Think about heaven later. Yes. <laughs> and I love that that scene was longer in the book. Like uh-huh. I think if we yeah. had gotten the context of all of that conversation, it would it might have been a little bit different. But of course, movies want you to feel a certain way for certain characters. Um, but that was that's probably one of my favorite scenes when she <laughs> smashed that wig down or whatever that is growing. You gotta bash Mrs. Head in now. And even even Celia got a little chuckle out of it. I don't think I remember her seeing her laugh at that part. Like she thought it was funny in the book, I think. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's, and, it's, and there's two scenes I think that played out differently in the movie versus the book that the movie is so ingrained. The scene where Celie has that blade and she's going to cut a uh, shave mist. Yeah. And the way that it played out in the book, I was like, dang, I was waiting on it to play. I was like I was <laughs> remembering, like, oh, I guess it didn't play out like that. And then the um the the dinner table scene. I just wanted to hear Sophia say, "Oh, Sophia's home now." Sophia Whatever it is, it's gonna change <laughs> right here. Because <Yeah. laughs> it was word for word in so many other parts. So I was like, "Wait, mm-hmm. we, we yeah. not gonna that line?" <laughs> when she's confronting uh, Celia, she's like, "You told Hoppo to beat me." <laughs> I know that entire part, like in the movie, and I'm like, to a T. Most of it is pretty accurate in in how she says it in the audiobook too. well written um i want to go back and read some of her other works too i know she has a lot of poetry and stuff like that too but i think there's another one that she kept making reference to in her journals that's controversial and i can't think um i don't know if it's meridian maybe i know i've read the second one in the trilogy of the color purple is it yeah the second one in um uh, temple, it's the, temple, temple of my familiar, familiar. I read yeah, that one. I've read that ago. one, but I haven't read the third one. I haven't read the third one. Me either. I don't know. Oh, possessing that. it's possessing the oh, secret, that's of, secret of joy. I read she talks the a lot about that in Gathering yeah. the Blossoms and how she wanted that to be a film as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to go back and read that because I need to reread that one. All I remember is the girl in Paris and female mutilation. That's all yes. mm-hmm. yeah. she did a lot apparently of documentary, like she was researching. Um these different tribes and and the things that you know she traveled a lot and she has a lot of connections with like a lot of famous people she'd just be like oh yeah tony you know 
you know, Tony was here and I saw her at this and Angela Davis came by the house and I went to Cuba and, you know, we saw Asada and she was looking great and feeling great. I'm like, bro, like what a time to be alive, like for that to be your circle and the people that you're hanging out with. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, in the book, the one thing that I just, I don't know, it'll always bother me. It'll bother me in a book, in a movie. The whole, like the men marrying those young uh, right. girls. Okay, daughter. Like that, do she explain that? Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure that that was happening back then. Like just the fact that he went to the house and was like, cause I need a new wife. Their mother died and you know, like that to me is just so, uh, that's the only part of the movie that I just can't, I cannot. Yeah. I mean, that that part was based on her grandfather and what really happened, um, him seeking, needing another wife and you know being in love with Suge and just kind of having to settle for the younger uglier bride um but yeah that's based off of her grandfather like that's who the in, the inspiration for the story came from it was real my great grandmother told me i mean but they she was in love with my great grandfather but she was 14 that and same with, yeah. at like 12 her mom was like you got to get a husband <laughs> Yeah. Because it was another mouth to feed, you know, even if she was working, they were sharecroppers in, in Clinton, Louisiana. But she said that, that her mother told her, you, 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 it's time for you to start finding a husband. And she did. She, they were married till the day he died. They were married seven yeah. years. But And just times were so different, you know, mm-hmm. like what were real women really doing back in those days that, yeah. you know, they weren't as independent in what we're doing mm-hmm. <laughs> now. So it's like, that's probably their goals and dreams at that time was to get married and find a husband, have kids and raise a family. Yeah, she was, she was born in 1906. So mm. give you some context. Oh. that sounds really close to my great grands. I mean, she was alive when she died shortly after I mean, I was a kid kid, but I remember her talking about, yeah, me and pop pop were married for 45 years. And I was like, doing the math like how old were you I think they got married at 13 wow um, yeah and I'm from my Tennessee, mom was 16 so. that's not wow. great that's from my age I guess because I'm mm-hmm. only 45 but my mom was 16 my dad was 21 wow mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even imagine she, like... she thought she was gonna get away with it too they actually eloped and then came back and she was trying to go to school but my aunt told my nana and my nana was like no you want to be grown now well, she, took, she, pulled, she pulled her out of school um she went back and got her GED but yeah my, like my nana was like mad that she had a look and was like you don't get to go to school now like you now you want to be a woman like so mm. yikes yeah. now um, I have yeah. to gather in blossoms now but I, I don't they were I... married 41 years when my dad died sorry wow. Wow. somebody else what were you saying Nicole so now I have to blossoms because I like hearing backstories to to mm-hmm. stories and to know that that makes up part of the color purple yeah I'm it's wondering not- Jamie you read the other book I can't remember the name of it I didn't one- I I didn't I started and I didn't I didn't finish that one so I'm wondering if that even tells more on the backstory of what's going on but yeah she it does start to get it it well the part I read it's more like you were saying, and it sounds like a repetitive, um, if those are her journals, but like Stephen, like what parts she played that she was adamant about like certain things being in the movie. It starts all like that. So I didn't finish and may go into, like I, I didn't hear that that was based on her um, grandfather. And that's what I'm wondering. Book, so. Yeah, because this is obviously written by somebody else. It's called In Search of the Color Purple, the story of an American masterpiece. So someone else's perspective, yeah. but at least in this one, Alice does, t- like she has journals about like, you know, the premiere and the casting. And like, she yeah. she doesn't like, you know, talk about it the whole entire book, but definitely in the 80s as stuff's happening, she talks about like, okay, I'm getting this much. She actually talks very openly about her money and how much she's making like, oh, like I'm, you know, I'm speaking at this school and then I'll get a check for $5,000 and here's my royalties from, you know, the color purple and now they're doing a musical. So I'll have this, like she was just getting like checks cut left and right um, just from like speaking engagements and stuff, even before the color purple broke as a movie. You know, there's another version um, of the the color purple coming out like next year sometime. No, there's not. Uh, 
Right. Is that or not? Is it big? Who's doing that? It's a, it's a, like, um, it's, it's the it's musical. Stage. Oh, the musical. Oh, the yeah, musical. It's the Broadway. Musical. Okay. Yeah, it's the Broadway. Musical, musical I can do. I have that seen already. It. But yeah. Musical, yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's a movie. Movie fitted with a picket sign. It was parts of it. No, it's not the musical that's going that was going on recently. It's a movie that's a musical. It's a Mm -hmm. a musical, yeah. So it's it's like um, a lot, yeah, yeah. So it's Taraji's in there. Yeah, wow. I think Jennifer Hudson's week. Oh, Fantasia. That's right. Oh yeah, Fantasia, Danielle Mm -hmm. Brooks. Um, And yeah, that's right. Danielle's in that one too, then, because she's in Uh, the Broadway play. Yeah, I think yeah. Coleman Domingo, Coleman Domingo plays Mister. If I'm, he not does. Mistaken. Yep. And I love Coleman. He is so. And good. The, the, the um the sister who's going to be um the two sisters. Oh, uh, Hallie, Hallie. Yeah, Hallie is going to be Squeak. Is, oh, is it going to wow. be a musical or is it going to be they remaking the movie? It's, it's, the, a, music. it's the musical. It's the musical version. And Fantasia oh, okay. was great as Sealy. She really was. was. I mean, yeah, Cynthia Rebo probably they, stole it, but I think it's safe to say then their sentiments, everyone's sentiments are don't touch the movie. Right. Don't try right. to don't you can do a musical yeah. all day. Yeah. Don't yeah. touch the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, but do not a remake touch of the movie. movie. Yeah. Exactly. It's not a remake of the movie. It's yeah. the musical, which is different from the movie mm-hmm. and the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I, tell me, tell me the name of the what you're reading about her journals because I thought I recalled from way back in the day, Gathering Blossoms Under Fire. Okay. Yeah. I thought I remembered that she wasn't happy with the movie. And like, that's what I thought too. She actually, and I remember her saying that she went to the premiere and she said something along the lines of, thank God I enjoyed it because I would hate to have to go to press and talk about this and not oh, okay. have liked it. So she <laughs> did. Um, there might've been some things I'm trying to recall that she might have tweaked on there, but for overall, she was happy with the way that it came out. I mean, because she, Alice Walker, come on, her and Tony both can be real shady, slick shady Mm -hmm. um, sometimes. (laughs) Right. So maybe maybe we were reading a little bit of shade into something. Maybe she said to Oprah, because that was during the day when Oprah was, her show was a heyday. I I can't Mm -hmm. remember how that is sticking in my brain because I kept thinking after writing this, this work of art um this book of letters to god and what she says it's a book about god it's not a book about cd yeah. it's not a book about you know the, the characters i wonder you know years years away from the movie like how she feels about the legacy of and i think what the movie to, has become so what you're saying the part that i said her feelings were like written at the time like you know as oh, the premiere was happening okay she does mention that she goes on oprah and it's like in the 90s so you know you're talking okay mid 80s okay. is when she wrote that and then she talks about going on the oprah show in the okay. mid 90s so it probably after all those years because i i think she did receive some backlash <laughs> on certain parts and characters so i think probably yeah. after it's sinking in um because a lot of people were trying to ban the color purple in general so it is think, banned, isn't it isn't yes. it banned now yes Mm -hmm. um so i think there's a lot of thoughts and feelings that probably come after that what i've learned from alice walker and reading her journals is she's a very moody person Mm -hmm. (laughs) and she snaps on her lovers and just did like there's constant stuff going on um she's also very sexual she's a very sexual human being too Mm -hmm. like she talks about all of it like and she has feelings for like all of them almost like and they she'll let one go and then circle back to another one yes, years later yes. and it's like she, she you know, definitely you start the book, yeah it's yeah. just it's it's a lot it's a lot mm-hmm. um because like I even think she's bipolar personally she might be, i think that it? she and that's not like a, a di- i really think that she that's how she comes off to me that mm. she probably should have a stabilizer somewhere in there but back then and you know that's not something we were right. doing or diagnosing but that's how that's how she always comes up to me yeah she she dealt with a lot of her emotions by purchasing homes that's that was like her thing she purchased homes wow. in different places so like she has one in mexico and then she moved here with robert and purchased a house and 
she likes to take care of people too. Like she'll just be, you know, handing out checks and stuff. I'm like, hey, Robert got to go, man. He's yeah. <laughs> he ain't no good. Um, but, and then know, I, go ahead. I hate that they banned her book, but I love that people are reading this field because I feel like a lot of the authors from back in the day. A reason why a lot of their books are getting banned is because they're exposing things about our culture and history that we like to sweep under the rug. Mm -hmm. Like we don't like to acknowledge that back in the day during in the Southern times, there was a lot of family molestation and you, oh, you keep that quiet. You, this girl is pregnant. We're going to hide this baby, you yeah. know, being, you know, shunned from the churches or, you know, if you wanted to explore different things that I like that they, put it out there like her yep. and Tony even though Tony is so long-winded oh Jesus Lord but <laughs> I I like that they put it out there because when I first saw Color Purple I'm gonna tell you I don't know maybe it's just how I grew up I did not know that Suge and Steely was into each other then when I watched it again as an older person I was like wait a minute yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <What? laughs> like what just happened here and then the whole thing with, but I just feel like she doesn't sugarcoat it. She's like, no, back in the day, this is what they did. Mm -hmm. And here it is. But I hate that they banned it though. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. I um, was telling my husband, forgive me for getting nerdy for a minute. I'm, I'm a former, former person that worked in full-time ministry. So I, I got to, um, after closing the book, my tattered up copy of this book it's really it's from 1986 my granny gave it to me who passed away uh, two years ago. <laughs> but um I was like these this book is a compilation of letters to God how we should speak to him and I was like I love Alice for unapologetically saying this is how we talk to God like this is how we lay that abuse at his feet and just talk I mean you just with a naivete and with a not trying to have a context about it or make it make sense to God at all. You just are writing it out, which then points to the importance of journaling because we, we are going to edit ourselves, edit what we say, edit those emotions. So I think that's why it hit me so differently reading this, this time. We're in a season right now where people are being urged and, and encouraged to be themselves, to take care of themselves and though there's a lot of trauma in this book. So I can see why people, I can see why people want to ban it, but authors aren't writing like this. Like yeah. authors aren't, authors, authors aren't writing flat footed and without context and just saying, this is what happened. And I don't know what this button is. Like we would just, we, we, we use, we would have used different language and we would have edited all of this trauma in a way that makes us deal with it as a reader. Like, whoa, like she didn't try to, I love books and movies that don't try to give you the message. They tell you the story and you take from the message what it is. What it is, and yeah. I think that's what is beautiful about coming back to the book from the movie because the movie music can evoke an emotion, a certain facial expression can evoke an emotion, but just dealing with the words, mm -hmm. I was just like, this is, this is, I see why this is one of the greatest books for me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a nerd. <laughs> no, I passed the plate. That was good. I, yeah. I, I agree with all of it. And you you mentioned that I was going to mention too, where t um, Tony, we said, somebody said Tony, and I got I know. Tony. <laughs> where <laughs> Alice was saying she's still puzzled about why it's so infrequently referenced as a book about God and about God versus the God image. Mm. So I started reading the book this time with that in mind. Of course, I was a teenager back then, like mm -hmm. 15, whatever. So I didn't really catch it mm -hmm. or I don't remember catching it. Maybe I did, but it makes so much sense mm -hmm. because like you said, just about every letter in here is to God. Mm -hmm. And then she talks so much about what they think God is and who they think God is and mm -hmm. to them and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? She's got a very valid point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even just to see her journey and how like she still believed in God because look at the hell from that the beginning of part. the book 
when her dad is raping her and yes. all, like she's getting married off to this guy who essentially is raping her too like just all of these things that happened to her and the abuse and just the things that she dealt with and it's like until Suge came around like that was her little bit of sunshine that she got eventually but like mm-hmm. to continue to have faith in God and believe in God and believe that my sister's out there like just so much yeah even her sister being <laughs> torn away from her like there's mm-hmm. just so much mm-hmm. where she just could have not believed in God and had faith mm-hmm. with all that was going on with her and it's just incredible mm-hmm. to see that mm-hmm. it comes full circle mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I wish I would how long it takes before. it comes full circle right that's well, right um, like to, to hold on to faith for however long you have to so yeah I like that yeah. I wish they would have put more in there about the relationship because it seemed like her and Sophia and Sophia's sisters had a good relationship. Like, mm-hmm. because I felt, especially from the movie, it always came off as if she was so lonely and that everybody just treated her like she was just secondhand. Like they didn't really talk to her. Like I didn't feel like she finally got accepted until she was much, much older. But from the book it kind of comes off as like when Sophia first came around that they were very close or what was what we consider close back then you know Mm -hmm. so I wish they would have showed that more but I guess that helped to build up that feeling of that we have for Seeley like we would fight anybody for Seeley you know like yeah to build that feeling up to me it was almost like um it's almost like the outer self not outer self and inner self inner self like you can still be very very alone but still have a lot of people around you and in your corner so I I felt that from the movie Mm -hmm. because it was focused on her and her perceived isolation or loneliness or not having anybody so like if you think that you don't have anybody like that's your spotlight almost on, on your situation but um I feel like, like, I wanted those things too, Nicole. I wanted to see Sophia's sisters involved. Like, I wanted more of that middle part of the story that just zoomed along in the movie. Yeah. (laughs) And that movie is already super long. So, can you imagine adding all that? (laughs) I wonder what didn't, what like almost made the movie, but didn't make the movie. Like, something that was pivotal that there's a, probably a lot of stuff on the cutting floor, right? But what almost made it? Like, what was the last thing that they had to be like, ah, we got to cut that. That's a long right. scene. Um, what yeah. about Mr. Though, y'all? Like, I felt a lot more sympathy for him reading the book than I did the movie as well. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I didn't want to. I, want to. I just Not liked sympathy. him better at the end, but I didn't feel There it. you go, at the end. <laughs> Yeah, not that's about right. It. Not liking him. Now I'm not saying that at all, but like I think I felt more of the scenes with his father and like mm-hmm. his his conundrum with Suge for all of those years, whatever that was about. Like mm-hmm. I was like, huh? It's not that he's a complicated man, but he got his stuff too. Like everybody's got their their mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. I guess. I mean, yeah. it stems it, from how his father treated him, yep, and then it's, it, 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 car- it carries on. Like, you, yep. we see that all the time. It's a reflection yep. of how your parents treat you, and you know. So, and they briefly they they do like in the movie when you do figure out like he wanted to marry her, but because of what she did, it was like you can't marry this bluesy. Like, you have to get a wholesome wife. So, and then his wholesome wife was a whore <laughs> who was right. all who was right. on. <laughs> and there you go. Right. So. <laughs> Did I totally miss an explanation around like his lack of relationship with Suge's kids? Like I know that because Suge, you know, was traveling as an entertainer, maybe like I think her kids were with her, with her Her mom. Her parents. Yeah, her parents. But still like just his total lack of relationship with those kids. Nah, I don't, I don't recall reading anything about it, Mm -hmm. but I just, I just assumed that if the parents disowned her, they definitely don't want the, him to have me. I don't know. You you have a good point though. You have a good point. Like all the, who was it talking about all the kids running around the house? I mean, in the movie. (laughs) And so I I think I just assumed that those, all of his kids were there in the movie, but they weren't. There's three more of, of which he was very proud to be. You know, he loves oh, saying I got kids by Suge, but it's right. Like, it's all her kids are like I know who I know who the daddy is. All them kids, I can vouch for that or whatever he tells his daddy. 
Okay. Yes, he does. But I, I'm think I'm thinking that just like Suge was shunned, right, and kicked out the church, the parents kind of took him in. Suge kind of knew that's the best place for them, and I think they kind of broke, severed that. Like I can't see them welcoming him. Like, oh, you want to see your kids? Right, right. So that's how a I, it's assumed. Man. I, it isn't said in there, but yeah. Yeah. that's an assumption. Yeah, I totally get. Yeah, I get that. I just wish. Now, that's one thing that I do wish was like kind of. A, not long drawn out address yeah but like this directly address from here from like here. did i did i miss it seemed like they didn't have any relation not they had had relations right but it seemed like they weren't in like communication with each other until she got sick like she was in that town and he decided to go and get her it didn't seem like they were having an active this my man and when I come to town I'm gonna come see him right. like or maybe we just didn't get that mm-hmm. did I miss that part maybe I over I didn't get that, that. Either. Mm-hmm. I think it's clear in the movie no. that how their relationship is but in the book I feel like they talked about them dipping in and out of each other's lives throughout the years okay I think yeah yeah I was gonna say that yeah I think that's a difference in the movie it, we know that was her first time seeing her and stuff but she does say to kind of allude to like what you said by Asia in the book that it was kind of on and off on and off that he he was talking about her like that's where the you sure is ugly like I heard about you so they had to have oh yeah connected and mm-hmm. stuff you know like because that wasn't the first time it's like oh so when did they get together they must have been getting together although they yeah. didn't know what I'm saying but yeah I yeah I remember yeah in her in the book of course Celie is pining over the flyers that she keeps finding but I didn't get an inference that he was like leaving town to go and be with her or whatever, mm-hmm. but I'm sure it, it probably was happening because what nothing happening between them and the house. Y'all, one of my favorite <laughs> scenes in the movie is when he is trying to cook for Suge and <laughs> Seely oh, takes all yeah, her that ass mess and she won't eat nothing. <laughs> Baby, when no, but when Seely disappears <laughs> with the rocking chair because the kitchen goes yes. you know, blow up, <laughs> yes. She came yes. with, with the kerosene or gasoline. <laughs> yes. <or whatever>. <laughs> We was talking about that on the watch party, how funny it was. And I was looking for that scene in the book and it was not in the book. I was, was I I cracked up when she drops to that ground. When she thinks she 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 gone with us. Yes. Oh, that, yes. thing, that car pull off and she <laughs> fell all the way out he looked yes. down like oh shit yes. like now nah, I gotta to carry you yes. like, right. <laughs> but there was a similar scene sorry I'm getting dressed for a holiday party there uh-huh. was a similar scene in the book though because she made her she she fixed the ham and yeah and, yeah. and that's how they actually yeah. great for the strawberries she made and it for she, her like, though right she made it yeah, yeah. Her. yeah. she, she made it for her mm-hmm. so i was like there was a scene where she finally ate something and he was like how'd mm-hmm. you get to eat so my mm-hmm. my thought was he had been trying to cook and she wouldn't eat it and she said anybody could dead or alive go eat country country smoked ham or whatever yes it was. yes huh? yes baby when he got that kerosene in that rocking chair like i was yeah, like she's <laughs> like i'm out she did that sponge she said she first, did that sponge she was like, I'm right, gonna I'm watch you try to do this and she think you can do it but then it was like oh yeah okay <laughs> that's the real time to go <laughs> right yeah that's the real time to go <laughs> hilarious yeah it's a classic for sure. Um, yeah, so I was happy yeah. to incorporate it as a book club read and kind of revisit. And then the watch party, I think y'all that were able to join and do that. Um, any final thoughts on this book before we talk about other stuff? I'm really glad. I mean, I'm new, new-ish to the group anyway. So yeah. hey to everybody. And I'm really glad to jump back into this to break up the monotony of all the current stuff like it was good to just kind of go back to something that I love anyway and yeah. read it with fresh eyes so thank you for having a diverse reading list because ah, you're welcome a couple of other groups that I'm in they are stuck on you As- know who from, oh, from oh. Book Talk. <laughs> Look, I, 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 can't I can't even anymore. lie listen I can't Look. I, I requested Coho on my, my Elfster list. Oh. <laughs> but not every other month. Like, do we have to read it every other month? I know, it's a lot. Like, I will say 95, probably 95% of what I read is by Black women, um, 
people of color, like that's black men. That's mm-hmm. what I read. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but there's a little bit of percentage. I think last year I read every single author was an author of color except for one book. And I should have just not read that book and just ah! like let the whole year. Um, this year I didn't do as well, but yeah, like that's pretty much the mission behind no Book Girl Magic. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, the whole reason Book Girl Magic was created is because I wanted to, I grew up in the suburbs um, here in Georgia and didn't know much about Black history and, you know, mm-hmm. just really going to a mostly white college didn't learn it there either. So Book Girl Magic was created under trying to m- learn more about myself and my history and just read mm-hmm. more books by people that look like us. So, um, nice. and then I think I went on a podcast with Tracy from the Stacks. We've had one book by a Black male. Um Colson Whitehead he's the only male that's made an appearance on this but after talking to Tracy on the stacks I was on her podcast we were doing Toni Morrison the bluest eye that was the book that we did together was our first time reading her but it was just she was talking to me and she was like yeah it'd be really cool if like your book club was solely with it being book girl magic that your focus is black women authors and I was like you know what that's a great idea so that's kind of where that came from is just I'm focusing on black women and giving us our shine um I like that you put this book up because I never read it and now Mm -hmm. it makes me go read some of my other favorite movies yeah because like I love women of Brewster Place I love that movie we did oh we did that I was gonna say you must have joined after because we did we did that one probably two years ago maybe now I I can't keep straight to the color purple and women of Brewster Place are two that I can wholly love the movie and the books Mm -hmm. and love both of them same. same 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 go the women at Bruce's honey. place her writing is oh uh, it is amazing yeah. yeah it's beautiful and all to to the sentiment that um LaShawn just shared about the diversity of your selections the bluest eyes since you just mentioned it I had read that that was another like long years ago hated it I, I hated it I was like it doesn't make sense anything and I read mm-hmm. it again and was like ah oh, Oh, it's so like, you know, it's like a totally it. different <laughs> experience. So I was like, oh gosh, I had to five star. Like, wow. Yeah. So yeah. And that's why I like, I like to pull and in I would old never stuff have read too. It if you didn't. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have read it again. It was just like on my worst ever list. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so I definitely like to pull in the older books and, and, mm-hmm. you know, relive those and discuss them because like, yeah, if we read those things when we were early twenties and our teens, then we're going to have different thoughts about it now that we're in, you know, mm-hmm. our forties and late thirties and, you know, it's just going to be early different. 50. Look, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> look. Well, Renee, let me, cause I got back to the coho cohort a few months ago. Not all the books are as good as some of them. They I are. Know. I read that too in some reviews because I was. They are very after Verity. Yes, they're well, very. She get crazy. less crazy because she's crazy. She is. Crazy. Yeah. I found out recently that some of her, like two of her books, are written about her trauma from, um, something. I think it was Ugly Love. It's written about her trauma with her parents, so that was true. But then a lot of people were bashing her because one of her books was based about her son and how he had like really was stalking his chick and manipulated her and everything and it was kind of like whoa wow. defends her son's antics you know but mm-hmm. they are very hit or miss there's only a few that I like but yeah don't get sucked in don't get sucked in I've uh, <laughs> I've only read Verity so far but everybody talks about it starts with us and it ends with us so those yeah. are the next two that I plan on reading because I've heard those but yeah so I was going to get both of them for you but I was like to not get you something that's black girl I was like I I know know. you know what's funny (laughs) is that cookbook we've done Elfster this is the sixth one that book has been on my Elfster it's the only book that's been on there every single year since the beginning so I'm like finally somebody bought me that cookbook (laughs) it's what is it called the black girl baking or something I don't know but it was it's been on the list for for six years now and finally somebody bought it for me so and i was like i appreciate you know, you. I thought those black friday deals would have been a little bit better because i was gonna try to squeeze in the third book but then i wanted to do no back. the way it was so wrapped and pretty i was like, it was yeah, like it no <laughs> it was her it was perfect um so yeah i'm still hoping that this elfster stuff comes to an end uh it's probably gonna be a very small group going forward because every year it just I think I've only had one year where I've had to buy somebody something because they didn't get anything. Other than that, 
everybody pretty much does it but it takes some like push I mean y'all saw I sent the message to a select few of y'all where the girl was like well I haven't gotten my stuff yet I'm like it doesn't matter send your shit out (laughs) I'm like come on it's just yeah it or just, no wait <laughs> this started already <laughs> like this just that part she was like it just started i was like it started on the 24th what are you talking about like this has been going on for almost two weeks it now, started like. when you could have saved a little money and gotten uh... <laughs> and that's the thing like i try to do it before black friday so people hit the deals and also like i figure by the first or the 30th whatever people should be getting paid by then right you should have to hit a paycheck at some point so like just send it out at so. this point, one of my books the candle went on sale and I was like, well, I don't know if my person gonna buy my books or not. So let me get this. Let me just get it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So no, we'll I see. got really lucky this year because I had you and then one of my friends. I mean, we are we used to work together. So I mean, we're close, close. And yeah. she and she kind of slick called me we check in like two Fridays a month and she was like yeah girl so what you reading and I'm just talking talking and she's like oh okay yeah because I got this and I was like I probably got my Elsa stuff too and it's just sitting there in the Amazon box so that kind of like let her know <laughs> oh she got it but she just didn't open it but I was yeah. like matter of fact I'll be seeing her on Saturday she probably would have been like girl did you get them books <laughs> right did you get them already that's awesome Look, Jess said they wear my poor friend now they do I'm like, I think next year I'm just going to invite certain, but then there's going to be an influx of people coming. When's the Elfster thing? Blah, blah, blah. So I got to like go back through my list and know like who does what they're supposed to do so I can include them. Yeah. Because I'd like for it to be more than just like our small group of people, but like at the same time, I'm like last year, and I think I wrote this in a comment, I'm like the girl was like oh yeah I'm out of the country so I can't send it like why do you sign up for this knowing that you're gonna be it's not like you just decided to go out of the country yesterday like you knew this was gonna happen when you signed up for this like I can't I just it make it make sense and, and then, so it's, can, it's a Facebook message you can order on Amazon I was about to say yeah. the same thing. you got right. internet I that mean part, you, yeah Amazon is accessible from all devices and it's really easy from the phone. Like, come on. You got Wi-Fi, it takes two seconds to mail it out and do what you need to do. Yeah. And my thing was, let me get all my my Elster stuff out before my son's Secret Santa and my Secret Santa at work and all that. I'm like, let me get all this out. Mm -hmm. out Yeah. Yeah, they're doing an Elster for my daughter. Like they took the idea from my book club again and are now doing it for my daughter's team since they're not able to have a team party anymore. And I'm like, I'm all Elfstered out, man. Like I just feel like the Grinch because I'm like, I'm over buying people gifts and trying to maintain stuff. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. So um what's everybody last, reading? Yeah, that's what that was my next question. You know, I you know, I'm gonna throw it in there. <laughs> I'm going to start before I let go by Kennedy Ryan. I just finished Gathering the Blossoms this afternoon. So um, before I let go, everybody's been raving about that one. So um, we'll see. I'm I'm reading The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. Okay. Oh, Oh, I think I've seen that. The cover is real pretty, isn't it? It's cartoony. Yes. 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 I saw it on several people's Goodreads and I kept seeing it like pop up and kept getting all this you might like this and I'm like what why would I like something about this but (laughs) yeah for a little bit it's actually very good it's not what you would think it's talks about so many microaggressions of her being this uh Hispanic girl and her friend is this black girl in this all white Catholic school oh some of the things they say to them and it takes place now like it's not like back in the day like it's written as in now i'm like why didn't you snatch that girl hair out her head because she just mm. it's it's pretty good though and it's a quick yeah. read. Like, i started it yesterday and i'm halfway done with it okay yeah i'm gonna have to add that i've seen it surfacing so i'm gonna have to add that What's to my list it? uh the lesbiana's guide to catholic school okay and it's good because they talk about like how in hispanic families it's still a big shun to be gay because you know they're so catholic and the mom's like oh i'm gonna die if uh, you know because you you know so they can't tell the mom and then they're trying to be who they are in this white community and like one of the kids said to her well they had like a drawing project and she goes well i don't know how to draw people with dark skin and everybody in the classroom laughs even the teacher and the girl is so humiliated she was like what do you do when you're the only dark-skinned person in this room Mm -hmm. and i was like oh this wow. is good. <laughs> okay. 
Sounds good. I don't know. I'm going to try to really stick to like the holiday reads. Yeah. And I'm gonna try to finish off WB Du Bois. The love song, because I got to get that done. 294 more Yeah, pages. that's going to be a 2023 read, because I can't. For a same <laughs> girl, it was, it was on my list. Like, I even made a reel, like, this is what I'm reading next. And when I picked it up, I was like, yeah, this is going to be next year. No, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a lot. And I, I, I stopped. I don't know. It's just, I still probably have like 14 hours left of audiobook left. Like I, it's not that it wasn't good. It just, yeah, I don't good. know. I had uh, to move I mean, on. Okay. So you did audio. That's what I think I was going to try to I do. Have every t- copy. I have the paperback, the hard copy. Same. I have the <laughs> ebook and the audio book. I have them all. But yeah, I was listening to it, but I just, I, I think I'm going to have to read it in 2023 and then start all over because I just it's been so it's been like probably six months since I last touched oh, wow. it so I'm gonna have to reread it well I just same time I go for the same time reading it and um reading it and following along yeah I typically do that I think that's what my game plan is gonna be since I have the ebook I'm gonna do it that way yeah who else well I just finished reading um I just finished reading um the um Trevor Noah's book and so then my next book was going to be um, The Two Lives of Sarah because I saw it at Barnes & Noble and it was beautiful on the outside. But okay. then I remember that it's like a prequel to a book that I hadn't even started by her, the <laughs> um, Saving Ruby King. So I read Saving Ruby King and um, was really intrigued by it. So I'm, I'm jumping into The Two Lives of Sarah now and I lose interest really quickly if it doesn't grab me right away then I will put it to the side and start something else that's going to grab me because I really want to read a holiday read. So um, the post that was up about those, I'm eager to. But I have so many books that I started that I'm just like... She, mm. she has a little top read. She has a little top. Like, I'm like, here's a holiday read for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. It's our December book of the month. Yeah. oh fantastic okay christmas kisses um it's in the group too but fair Rashawn. i'm a huge fair fan uh after reading the hookup plan this year like i just i can't get enough of her so yeah. um i circled back and was able to find this this it's a two in one collection um two stories in here so um i had Don't to add her back in book there. renee <laughs> who did yeah that was you last year i was like do i count this at it's two, two weeks no it's one <laughs> i'm with talisha that's two books <laughs> uh, oh wait so it's only one hold on it's only one book if yeah it's one book story. but there's two stories on the inside oh okay well, that, in that case, chance, i thought yeah. you were saying like oh that one has two, two yeah two. yeah it's called the one of them's tuscan nights and the other one is a second chance christmas i bought it i just said pretty sure right well, I started this on the plane last week to Vegas and back, and then to San Francisco today, and I'm done. Good. I flew through it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to jump on that. That's probably be like a New Year read for me. It, 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 it would be a very good New Year read. It was. It was excellent. So now I'm like, well, shoot. Now what am I? But I do have a book that I have to post for Biblio Lifestyle or book tour. So I'm gonna start this wait list. Oh, I have that. I already posted though. Yeah, I post uh, yeah, tomorrow. it came out yes to yesterday, right? Yeah, I post tomorrow. So I, I was like, well, um, in the the two stories, the first story is ninety eight pages, and the other one is roughly like a hundred or hundred and twelve pages. In the, oh, okay, yeah, so they're two short little stories. So that's our December book of the month. If you're lucky, I we started that last year, right, with the holiday reads, like yeah, Christmas themed. We need our holiday watch party. Mm. Well, not holiday, but we have Kindred coming up on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm not sure I that now. I'm not sure yet, but I'm trying. If you haven't read Kindred, please do that. Oh, that's it's, a good book. Yeah. Yeah. We read it last year as a book club read. Last, I think it was last year, um, but it was really good. I actually probably would read that again. Um, so I'm excited for the watch party to see. I hope it lives up to the book. I'm and not just playing for the watch party. I'm gonna. I'm no. I'm not gonna get it in though. <clears throat> so I just finished reading High on the Hog. I I recommend that to all our people. If you want to be proud of our accomplishments, this is a lot of things that we are responsible for. As um folks taking over from slavery and bought here, a lot of influences. Like we were the first caterers. Um, yeah, we isn't first, that? I didn't even. I didn't know. I had no clue of a lot of that stuff. And it just. I think. Me- 
it's a that turned into a Netflix series. Uh-huh. That Netflix series it, it, is. I watched Chef's both. I, I okay. read uh-huh. both and I watched both. But now, when they told us to read this book, I, I did it for a book club. I was like, I'm not reading that no book for the book club. I'll pass on this one. But I started reading it. It was so good. It just pulled me in. So when we had our meeting, everybody that came to the meeting gave it five stars. You know, you just learn so much about what we're responsible for, what we did, we, manners, all that kind of stuff That's came true. from Africans. Her her memoir is really good too. Jessica B. Harris. Her mm. memoir. She has a memoir. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I've read, I read it this year. And then the cooking gene is a similar history. Yeah, I read that. With genealogy and that one is amazing. He just came cooking out with gene. another one this year about yeah. kosher food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the cooking gene was amazing. Okay, I'll check that one out. That one was. And good. right now I'm reading X by um his daughter. I I have Elijah uh, Shabazz. I, I'm saying yeah. her name, wrong. but I read it before. But that's what the book club put, so I'm reading it again. It's a okay. good book. Sounds good. Anybody I else? In, in the wicked, we trust in the in the group was it somebody in here is that the um i know what book you're talking about because i think i have it I've is that by free from for kindle from kindle unlimited oh so i might I'm that one next i think i'm gonna do say the name again in the wicked we trust uh-huh in the wicked we trust okay thank you Somebody mentioned that in the um, in the group. I'm gonna uh, finally do sure razor blade tears. I need to finish. Ah, uh, that's gonna be on my list. Mm-hmm. That's on my list. Everybody. It's been on my list but for the entire year, but it I qualifies as one of the Kindle Challenge books. Ah, like, uh, so you have yeah. a new one out too. It's a good one. Razor blade tears is good. The There's another one he has. The waste wasteland something. And another one came out mm-hmm. yesterday. Wow! Oh, wow! Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna make it my goal in 2023 to read all three of his books then. Because I've heard good things about the two that yes. he already had. The new one is My Darkest Prayer, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my goodness. It's it's got amazing reviews so far uh, already. Oh, wow. Ooh. Advanced copies people are reading. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> thousands of them let's see i've thousands. been one to read i've been one to read black tie wasteland for a soul it's been on my to be read uh, so yeah. long good. that's a good one too it's good which one black, black top, top wasteland that's on my list i gotta run y'all happy 20 holidays have fun Bye. at your party jess thanks for having thank on you. love your sweater you, you look cute, cute. Jess. Now. Um, <laughs> ugly sweater is tonight for dinner and then the party party is friday night oh fun. So, i love it so this is the have a blast we do three bye. days see you have, have a blast see you later bye, bye. Kindle unlimited christmas kisses is on kindle unlimited <gasps> yeah and i think honestly if you don't have it it was like two dollars i think when i bought it so it's it's super oh, cheap. Yeah. if you get yeah, it's really, yeah it was when i bought it it was super cheap because i had i like my ebooks so it is yeah. what it is. Well, thank you, ladies, for jumping on. Hope you guys have an amazing rest of the week and weekend. And hopefully I'll see y'all next week at the watch party if you're coming Tuesday night yes. at seven, I think. Um, you have to have Hulu, you know, to do all that. So look forward to it. All righty. Y'all have a good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.